Hello pre-calculus students and seekers of general truths. In the previous video, we discussed work and force and some quick examples. And um, we're going to get to a, something a little bit more complicated. And this is just a, a, a formula, and I will show you the rationale behind this in just a minute, that work is equal to the magnitude of the applied force, okay, not the effective force. AB is the displacement. If they're not in the same direction, then this is the formula we can use to calculate them. And so let's try to understand why this is. So let's say that I have an object here, some sort of lump, and I apply a force in this direction. Okay. But the object does not want to move in that direction. It wants to move, it's on some flat horizontal surface, like so. And the displacement of the object, it moves from point A to point B. Okay, so this is the displacement of the object. Okay. And I want to figure out what is the force or what is the work that's being done. Well, again, one of the things that I need to do, and let's, let's just for the sake of the discussion call this angle here theta. But what I need to do here is figure out what exactly, how much of this component here is effective, right? So this force vector has a horizontal component going this way and a vertical component going this way. But since the motion of the object is along the horizontal, it's the horizontal component of the force that is effective. And I, I put quotes around effective force because this is not a standard definition or term. It's just something that I use, and it helps me to think about it that way. So the effective force, uh, I guess we'll call it X again, okay, is the component of the applied force that's in the horizontal direction. So in this case, um, the effective force is going to be equal to uh, X over the hypotenuse, which is the, the magnitude of F, I should put, this is the magnitude of F, is equal to, and this is the adjacent length, so we call this the cosine of, an, of the angle theta, right? And then solving for this, we get that X is equal to the magnitude of F times the cosine of theta, okay? Now the work done is equal to the effective force, which in this case is X, multiplied by the, mag, the, the displacement which is the magnitude of AB. And then making our substitution, that's what this is equal to, so plug that in. And just rearrange things a little bit. So it's the magnitude of F times the magnitude of AB times the cosine of theta. Okay? And you notice as, as we do this, as we will work through the rationale for this formula, we also are able to clarify theta here. So theta is the angle between the applied force and the displacement and the motion. So it's the angle between the applied force F and the displacement vector AB. So there you have it, uh, just a little bit more clarity and a nice formula that is somewhat easy to remember, although it's more important that you understand the rationale for the formula. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is move on to an example of, of something like that that's a little bit more complicated. So a, a 15 pound force in the direction of this vector moves an object from zero, zero to four zero. So I'm gonna start out with my XY coordinate plane here. All right, so the object or the, the displacement is moving from zero zero to four zero. So this is my displacement vector. I'll call this A and B. And we can say that the, the components of AB is four zero and that the magnitude of AB, simple enough, is equal to just simply four in this case. Now the, the force has the magnitude of 15, 
and it goes through two three so two three so it's gonna go through this point okay so the force is going to look something like this it's gonna go through well it's supposed to go through that point and it has a magnitude of 15 pounds okay and what we want to know is how much work is actually done well so you can see here that what we want to do is figure out this angle because having this angle will help us um, to to determine the effective force or the effective component of this so you can see that the the, the blue arrow is really made up of a horizontal component here and a vertical component here okay and what we want to do is figure out what is the horizontal component here so we want to figure out the what is the horizontal component here that is causing this object to move forward so we'll, I'm going to call this again X and I know that X is going to be equal to 15 uh, cosine of theta okay but in order to find theta, well, I really need to use this smaller triangle here. The triangle that, you know, I know that it goes through 2, 3. Right? So I know that this length here is 3 and that this little length right here is 2. So with that, um, this will help me to figure out theta. So theta is just going to be equal to the tan inverse of 3 over 2 which my calculator tells me is um, 56.3 degrees. Okay. So what this means is now I can, that this X component here is just going to be 15 cosine theta. And that means the work done, I can use my formula from above, is the magnitude, which is of the applied force, which is 15, multiplied by the displacement, which is 4, multiplied by the cosine of 56.3. And this will give me um, an answer of approximately 33.28. Uh, this is pounds, so uh, we don't know the, the direction, um, the, the units for displacement. Let's assume it's foot. So this would be um, 33.282 foot pounds. Okay. And, and once again, you don't really need to have this formula memorized, right? You don't really need to have this memorized. You could have solved this problem. Uh, just without even knowing that formula, but hopefully solving this problem illuminates some of the rationale as to why the formula works and why it is true. Um, before I end this video, I will put out a, just a tiny little challenge for you to see if you can solve a, this problem a different way without using theta at all. All right, we will discuss this in if you're studying with Mr. Wen. Um, we will discuss this in class at some point, but I just want to point that point out that there is a possible way for you to solve this problem without even using theta. Okay. Okay. So use solve this problem without using any angles, or without using theta, and I don't mean just without using this particular letter. I'm not telling you to like rename this beta and just solve the same problem again. Just try to use see if you can solve this problem without using this angle at all all right as always thank you for watching keep working hard and have a wonderful day